prayers for our pastor and superintendent, J.L. Griffin. We say good morning to you. We hope that the Lord has truly blessed you in the days past, and we hope that he blesses you today. We come to you as usual in our virtual way on YouTube and Facebook, and times have not changed, but the Lord is still the same. So at this time, we're going to have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for how you watched over us and protected us. We thank you how you have guided us and kept us in our right mind. Lord, we pray for the nation. We pray for those that have lost someone. We pray for those whose feelings have been hurt. And Lord, we ask you that you heal our land. Heal our land, Lord. Bring peace unto this land in this trying time. Let us stand strong and know that you are God and you are God alone. And everything is in your hand. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due unto you. And all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. And at this time, we will have our scripture reading by our very own missionary, Muriel Bay. So say amen for her. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there is set thrones and judgments and thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within the walls of the prosperity within the palace. For the brethren and the companies of sake, I now say, peace be with thee. Because of the house of the Lord, God will seek thy good. I have read you Psalms 122 in its entirety, verses 1 through 9. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word.
Are there any happy people today? Yeah. 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 Praise God. The yeah. joy of the Lord yeah. is my strength. Yeah. I want to talk to you today from the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter and one verse, the 31st verse. The Bible says, let all bitterness, which means grudges, mm -hmm. and wrath, which is rage, and anger, and clamor, which means tantrums, mm -hmm. and evil speaking, which is just a poisoned tongue. Paul says, be put away from you mm -hmm. with all malice. From that text today, I want to preach to you for a few minutes from the subject, anger. Don't nurse it, mm -hmm. and don't rehearse it. Come on, Pastor. Yes. Anger, don't nurse it, mm -hmm. and don't, don't rehearse it. Rehearse it. Yes. The reason I sung that song today, the Lord put in my spirit when I was out at the Walmart's the other day, people that I used to run into that were smiling, seemed like they were happy, seemed like I saw more angry people than I've seen in a long time. Amen. We're living in the midst of anger. Yes. And so Paul said that we ought to let bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from among us with all malice. Mm -hmm. Now if you will check the dictionary, the dictionary describes anger as a strong passion, mm -hmm. an emotion of displeasure that is excited by a sense of injury or insult. We ordinarily think of anger as an emotion that's partly true, but anger is really a cluster of emotions mm -hmm. that involve the body, the mind, and the will. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. You don't just sit down and say, missionary, I think I'll be angry right now. <laughs> anger is a response to some event or to some situation in life that causes you to have irritation, mm -hmm. yeah. frustration, pain, or some type of displeasure. Yeah. Thousands of events and situations have the potential of provoking in us anger. True. Now, you say, not me, I'm saved, I'm deeper than that. <laughs> you just check yourself out. If you think you're that deep, let somebody come along and say a tactless comment about your weight yeah. or about your looks uh -huh. and see if anger doesn't stir up in you. Uh -huh. Anger is fed by feelings of disappointment, hurt, mm -hmm. rejection, and embarrassment. Yeah. And I said to the Lord when he spoke to me the other day at the mall and said, preach about anger. Don't nurse it and don't rehearse it. Hmm. I said, well, I better write down, Lord, what you're saying because it won't just be St. Matthew's hearing me. I said, some uh -huh. folk out there on YouTube and whatever else might hear this and I uh, don't know where I'm coming from. Uh -huh. So rather than me just talking, I wrote it down, yes. what the Lord put in my spirit. Is that all right? Yes, Pastor, yes. Anger has a way of pitting you against the person, the place, or the thing that sparked the emotion in you. Yes, Anger is the opposite of the feeling of love. Mm -hmm. Love draws you towards a person. Yes. Anger sets you against a person. Yes. People everywhere are experiencing the feeling of being overwhelmed by anger. True. And being unable to control the yeah. Anger is the emotion that arises whenever we encounter what we perceive to be wrong. Yeah. The emotional dis 
uh, dimension of anger leaps to the front burner whenever we feel someone has done us wrong. People of all ages and all social status experience anger. Yes. You've got little angry two-year-old children now. You've got angry folk with five and six degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The world really is an angry place. This corona virus that has come over the world has more people angry now than ever. They're angry with the governor, angry with the county legislators, angry with the county executive, just angry folk. Folk that you used to smile at and they used to smile at you. Now they see you and they don't know if you have corona or not, but they're backing up. Right. And they're backing up, not happy, backing up mad. Yeah. But I remember there was a time when the saints of God hadn't seen each other in a while. And when we saw one another, the joy just yeah. started leaping yeah. in our hearts. Yeah. We're living, church, in an angry day. The world is an angry place, and if you don't believe it, just pick up the newspaper. It's full of anger stories. Road rage. Parking rage. Boat rage. Fishing rage. Shopping rage. Grocery cart rage, check out line rage, yes. and even facial mask rage. Right. These angers are all turning into serious matters. Mm -hmm. It makes me sometimes think twice about leaving home. Amen. Now what makes anger so dangerous is, is that it flares up suddenly, yes. Yes. powerfully, and irrationally. Yes. Anger takes no thought about the future and it takes no thought about your personal safety. When a 90 pound man, so can wet 90 pounds, when he gets angry, he might challenge a 275 pound man. That's right. That's right. Knowing that he can't beat him, but anger is telling him that he can. Anger has a very, very short fuse. Okay. And that's why I tried to make it a practice not to deal with too many angry folk. Right. The Bible's first account of anger was in a man named Cain. Uh -huh. Cain got upset with his own blood brother. And because of anger, the Bible said he slew or killed his brother. Now in our generation, toxic anger, anger has climbed to new levels. Yes. You dare not accidentally cut off a driver on the highway because he or she might just follow you home and shoot you. Right. High school students are witnessing their friends being murdered in the hallways. Yes. Mm -hmm. The nation is looking at young men, black men, being murdered mm -hmm. and nothing too much is being said about it. There are people who spend their entire adult lives being nothing but angry. That's right. This message is not designed to make you shout. Right. But why would you want to live 65 years and all you can say that you were an angry person? There are people that spend their entire adult life angry. Mm -hmm. Anger is an acid that harms the person in which it is stored more so than it does the person that is poured on. Mm -hmm. wow. yes. Now we, we all have our weak spots or what I call pet peeves. Mm -hmm. They get inside of us and they work our emotions and they lead us to anger. We happen to live, church, in a hurtful world. Yes. There's so much anger and so much trouble that's about us, but we must learn how to handle our anger. Mm -hmm. and 
Thanks be unto God if Christ comes in us and we are taught and led of him and by him, we will control our anger. Yes. The Bible said to the saints, anger, but sin not. Yes. I'm going to get angry, but I don't plan on shooting you. So I, I today have a couple of suggestions to you okay. that I use in the subject. Nurture mm -hmm. and rehearse. We cannot nurture anger, mm -hmm. nor can we rehearse <coughs> anger. Yes. The Bible says to us, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That simply means that we need to clear all accounts yes. before the day is over. Yes. We need to practice making a 12-hour limit to our feelings of resentment. Yes. And before the sun goes down, we need to wipe the slate clean just like God wiped our slates clean. Yes. <laughs> Anger is a sin that really seems to us to be enjoyable. Some folks like to be angry. Right, and they savor that anger. Yeah, yeah. We take anger in and we welcome it and then we begin, begin to fantasize speeches that we're going to say because we are angry. That's, that's nurturing anger. Oh, yes, yes. Think about it for a moment. Think of all the angry speeches that you devised when you were laying in the bed. Yeah. Tossing and turning. What if you really said those things that passed through your mind? Would you like for them to be published in a book that your friends and your family can read it? <laughs> Yet we enjoy composing those secret, undeliverable speeches and we savor our anger. It's so hard, missionary, for us to let anger go. But God said, tell you today, don't nurture your anger. Yeah. You've got to learn before the day is over to pray about your anger. Yeah. And then even if you are not the culprit of the anger, you've got to say, Father, forgive them, mm -hmm. for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, anger is the only short story they have. Mm -hmm. That's the only short story and long story they have. <laughs> anger. Sometimes we need to learn as people how to write an end mm -hmm. to the end of the chapter in our lives. Amen. When you write in, then you need to take out another pencil and start a brand new book. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. And begin to write happy in yes. Jesus. Start a yes. fresh book. Yes. Nurtured anger really is no way to live. Mm -hmm. Anger is toxic. It's a poison, and it'll, it'll, it'll eventually kill your spirit. So don't nurse anger. Clear the accounts before the sun goes down. Yeah. Realize that if someone owes you an apology, more than likely you owe somebody an apology. Yeah. So what you need to do is just clear the books and be content to be even in the relationship. Then the final thing, don't rehearse your anger. I'm sure that you know some people who just love to tell all about their anger in great detail. Yes. When you meet them, they'll say, I'll wait until you hear the ladies. <laughs> the anger has consumed them until they've lost sight of how ugly and unattractive anger is in their lives. These are people who maintain their own little anger factories within themselves. And they keep a steady supply of anger on hand at all times. Nearly anyone can make them angry. While the same thing that that person did to the angry person, if they did to another person, the other person wouldn't think a thing about it. Some people simply have buttons to push. Some people have more buttons than others, and I've concluded some people are nothing but buttons. 
But the main process in the manufacture of anger is rehearsing it. I was listening to the praise team today. And I began to compare you all, Sister Astina, to when we first started recording. Uh -huh. And I said, I hear a distinct improvement, and I attributed it to rehearsing. Yes, yes. See, the more you rehearse something, the better you get at it. Yes. Some of you good liars ought to know what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> the more you lie, the better you get at lying. By the same token, the more you tell the truth, the better you get at telling the truth. Right. So rehearsing something is a manufacturing yes. outfit. Yes. It's, a, it, 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 it's something that produces. When you rehearse anger, you get angry. Any of you all gonna remember sometimes you'd sit down and the devil take control of you and you think about what someone did to you? And you say, the more I think about it, the better I get. Yes. Sure. It's the truth. Now what they've done is not multiplied anymore. No. What the problem is, is that you're rehearsing it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You right, Pastor. You go over and over what somebody sees. Yes. We begin to find a new meaning in what they see. When they first said it to you at church or at work, it made you angry. You were mad about what they said. But when you go home and rehearse it, and then you said, did she have the nerve? And you put new meaning sometimes to what the person just told you to stay out of my business. But because you rehearse it, you want to know what her business. <laughs> what business does she have so important that I need to stay out of it? <laughs> we build it up to something that may not even bother us much of the time, mm -hmm. but we're fed on it so much until the flame gets out of control. Yes. So the rehearsal of ang anger, saints, is a dangerous thing. Yes, Don't you think as I close, Paul admonished people to forsake, to get rid of anger, mm -hmm. because he knew the danger in being angry. Yes, he did. When you're angry, you will do things that you normally wouldn't do. Yes, and when your emotions get a chance to settle down, right. then you're sorry, sorry for what you did. Yes. Yes. Judas betrayed Jesus, but when his emotions calmed down, yes. he was so hurt and broken until he went out and committed suicide. Yes. Yes. I admonish you today, My God. don't nurse mm -hmm. and don't rehearse yes. anger. Yes. Yes. We're living in this time now where they're saying we are going back out, or going back to normal life, but they're telling us not to expect normalcy to be what it once was. Yes. Now it's no need of us getting angry you couldn't hardly get away to the way down you when you went in Macy's when things were normal. Amen. Now with this new environment that's come out, uh -huh. don't go in Macy's and turn the store out. Right. Amen. Amen. When you do get back in the church, uh -huh. we know that you used to sit in row three and seats four, yeah. but there's a new Yes. Mandate. Yes. And you might not be able to sit in seat four any longer. Right, right. Don't come to church and get angry. Yes. Because the usher tells you you can't sit there. Right. <laughs> we don't want to know about that used to be your grandmother's seat. Yes. <laughs> you just need to, with the help of the Lord, say, well, you know, there's been a change. Amen. But when you nurse stuff, and you rehearse stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. and you keep it in you all the time, and after a while you become an ugly person. Amen. People don't want to be around you. Yeah. People feel like my day is going to be messed up because this person nurtures and rehearses yeah. anger. And so I did not have this message. God did not design it for you to shout. But God wanted you to know during this time of virus, 
whenever we come out of this, if we come out, mm -hmm. it's going to be a whole different world. Yes. We looked on television this week and cities all over our nation yes. are back to where they were in the 90s, in yes. the 80s. Who would have thought oh that these days would come upon us again? Yes. And I must be truthful with you as an African American, when I see injustices that have been placed upon us, it doesn't make me feel good. No. And uh, a lot of you all listening to me were too young to remember, but I remember when Roots came out. Oh, yeah. And when they cut off Kunta Kente's foot. Yeah. And I went to school the next day, I didn't want the kids saying anything. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. I went to school, man. Yes. What I'm trying to tell you now, it's good for you to be up on current events, but don't make it a steady diet of watching yes. negative stuff on yes. TV all yes. day. Yes. Because you yes. go out angry. Yes. When you go out angry, you are not in a position to, to represent Christ. Mm -hmm. When you go out angry, people are going to come to you and say things that will shoot you off. And you say, oh, my Lord, after which I shared with you all a few weeks ago, the man, uh, the lady rather, she was headed home from work. The man behind her, they were in a big, long traffic jam. Someone had had an accident and the traffic was backed up for two miles. The man behind the lady blew his horn, missionary, honk, 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 honk. And so uh, the lady looked in her rear view mirror and she was an angry lady. And she got out the car and went back there and pointed her finger and shook it at the man and said, what in the world is wrong with you? Don't you see that there's been an accident up there and the traffic can't go anywhere? Why are you honking your horn at me? So you honk it one more time and say, this gonna be on. The man apologized to him. He said, oh, miss, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. He said, I didn't honk the horn to irritate you. He said, I looked at your bumper sticker and said, your bumper sticker said, if you love Jesus, honk your horn. <laughs> <laughs> then the lady wanted to change. Now, oh, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be careful when you're angry. Yes. Because you are representing Christ. Mm -hmm. Even on your job, wherever you go, there's pressures. Yes. In your home, there's pressures. But you've got to learn with the help of the Lord to control your anger. Mm -hmm. And God will. We talk about the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost will enable you to hold your tongue uh -huh. just like a wheel to shout. And sometimes we need to stop shouting Come on, and tell the Lord, now take control of my tongue. Yes. So yes. remember this if you don't hear anything else. Anger, don't nurture it. And don't rehearse it. Yeah. Again, we thank you for listening to us uh, and tuning in each week. We're thankful yeah. for you that give to us uh, weekly through the Giveify. Those of you that say you enjoy our broadcast and have not yet sent us a donation, it would really be appreciated and it would be able to help us do greater things in the ministry. We're praying for you, praying that God will keep you. Father God, that young man, he heard the word today, he's angry. But I pray that your anointed word would touch his heart. Yes. Give him to know that we live in an unjust world. And one day the injustices will be brought to an end, but in the meantime, God gives us the strength and the ability to control the anger that's in us. Yes. Young man, be encouraged. I pray for Travis today that you would touch his body. Yes. Touch his body and rebuke the sickness. Yes. Thank you for Brother Alvin. Yes. Thank you allowed him to come home. Yes. Hallelujah, Baba Shaham. The prayers of the righteous yes. availeth much. Yes. Let him have, I pray, a full and a complete recovery. Pray for those today that are bereaved who have lost their loved ones. Yes. Bless them, dear God, to go back to their destination in one piece. Yes. 
Help us all to realize that we are just travelers here. This world is not really our home. We're citizens of another world. One day, dear God, as we control our anger, we're going to go and meet you and hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The blessings of God be upon your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.